Any knowledge? Uh, no, not not much, not much, not much. Um, I've been uh, researching on YouTube and looking at some different uh, YouTube videos on uh, meditation. Uh, that's about the extent of it. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, in the last couple of weeks, we talked about a full path. You know about this, right? You know, a full path. Um, I don't, I don't know. You know, this one here. This is just about here. Can you see? Oops. Yeah, can you see here? So up here, right view. All right, and the next one, right, can, intention. So this is related to the wisdom. And uh, respect, reaction, right, livelihood. This is related to morality and right effort, right concentration, right mindfulness is related to meditation. So it's this tree, uh -huh, breaking into a tree. Uh, yeah. I'm having difficulties hearing you. My volume's all the way up. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Can you hear better? A little now, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, see that wisdom here, wise view, wise writers, madam, wise intention, uh, the ethics, wise speech, reaction, the livelihood, wise effort, the meditation, wise effort, wise mindfulness, wise concentration. So these are the three groups in the A4 pass. We go back, let's go back to um to the book and we can explain further. Now, this is a book here. All right. It is small. Can you read it or no? So you didn't reach the, the it's okay. It's okay now. Better now. Okay. Miss Christian, you like to read the book? Yeah. Meditation rests on the development of mindfulness and on the two key elements of concentration and insight. In eightfold path. Right concentration refers to the practice of trance meditation for mind. This type of meditation that the Buddha learned from his teachers involving is that flashing or moving crazy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yes, yeah. you can hook up. That the that? Yeah, you can hook up all on the computer. Yeah. Why is that? There's a computer, the computer up there. In the back, in the back there. In the tower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Uh, this is the type of uh, meditation that the Buddha learned from his teachers involving an intense focus on a particular object of meditation, leading to a state of one-pointedness in which duality of self and other dissolve. However, However, there is a risk that the practitioner may become attached to the blissful mental states, Diana's, experienced in samadhi and, and be so diverted from the realization of nirva mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so um so, so there are two types, types of um buddhist meditation. meditation of course there's lots and lots and lots of practices yeah. so, but, uh, can you hear <laughs> Can you hear? Yeah. And Stephen, can you hear? Yes, more for that. There are two main there are two main categories, which would be the one pointed concentration, which we practice here tonight, which is just the breath meditation, and then um, insight meditation, um, <clears throat> which is based on the Buddha's. Um, four foundations of mindfulness. So what it does is it 
it's a it's a contemplation um, exercise. So anyways, those are the two main categories. And then um okay, so right concentration is so yeah, so you really learn how to get that muscle strong that where you want to put your attention is exactly where your attention stays and there's not all these other distract you know that's how you learn to not have the distractions of the outside world snatch you away from what is true it's like kind of what you're holding on to this truth of the non-self right that's the truth the ignorance the ignorance is is noticing the self. The um, anyways, so that's why that's why even in these um, one pointed practices, the sense of self tends to dissolve in these really higher states of concentration. Um, but you know, of course it becomes very blissful and all of that, which is actually something the Buddha recommends turning away from. The, the Buddha recommends, well, he doesn't recommend <laughs> your way out of suffering in, in this life, if you want to become an arhat, you're going to become disenchanted with everything, right? Everything is... Hmm is the middle now that's some really high level stuff there <laughs> but um anyways the whole thing eventually is not is not to be attached to anything including the dark hmm. so uh and, and Stephen, can you hear you can hear um i can hear yeah it's a little light but i can hear Oh, okay. If you're if you're attached to, it's like because the point of meditation really is not to have this like wonderful, beautiful, blissful experience. That's that's not the point. Now, it happens, of course, and and you know we do become very enchanted by that, but we shouldn't. You know that needs to be let go as well. Because that's that's another thing that could like if it's that blissful state you're chasing, that's pulling you away from nirvana, which is this disenchantment with any sort of fluctuations in your in your perception. Okay, so let's go back. So um, thank you. So in Buddhism, the two main one, two men. Uh, meditation practice, one is called samatha, that's been great concentration, a focusing. Another one is uh, vipassana, that's been mindfulness. Mindfulness is, is, is a series of concentration. Concentration has been, let's say, um, we sit here and you listen to me, you concentrate on my explanation. That's called concentration. But when you stand up uh, and you know, you notice that you are standing, when you walk in, to the door, you notice that you walk in. That's called mindfulness. You understand that? Right. When you whatever you do things, you recognize it's called mindfulness practice. But when you focus only one, of course, it's called concentration. That's what we call the here, um, the insight. Uh, so the um, the uh, samatha, samatha concentration. Insight is meditation, and the insight is uh, vipassana. Uh, is that clear? And Stephen. Uh, Kenya, you hear that? Can you hear? Can you hear that? I can hear them a little. I hear you better. You're louder. Oh, okay, sure. Because I they... sent you a message. I sent you a message on here too, so you could maybe look oh. at that in your spare time. Oh, okay. Yeah. In the chat. I know. I know. Somehow, somehow, the screen is flashing. I don't know why. <laughs> And why is flashing then? Yeah, I've never seen it do that before. Yeah, you know. It's really hard to flash. Oh, it's good now. It stopped now. Okay. Yay. Yeah. Uh, it just stopped now. <laughs> oh, good. Nice. 
Oh, shit. can you enlarge the screen? What's that? Can you enlarge the screen where we can read along? And um, um, uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, you can see it from that screen. Sorry, I can see closer but not farther. I need to do. Right, let me see here. Speaker. All right, is that still okay now? The big screen. Let me share with you the screen. Can you do it? Can you see it's the screen now? It's better. Or same. You want me to read? Wait, wait. Is it's still... the same. It's a little bit better now. I can I can read it. Oh, okay. Yeah, please. The most important form of mind practice is insight meditation, Vipassana, developed by the Buddha, which aims to discipline the mind while fostering a profound clarity about the nature of reality. Right mindfulness entails careful attentiveness to the three marks of existence as they relate to one's own physical experience, dukkha, in terms of suffering, and permanence, anitya, and non-self, anatman. Uh, into and comprehension of the latter has a twofold effect. It promotes non-attachment, for if there is no soul, then there is no focus for clinging, which shields desire, and it cultivates spiritual insight, prajna, which develops, which dispels ignorance, avidya. Hmm. Yeah, please. You can sit here. Yeah, I can sit. Yeah. How have you been? Yeah. yeah, go ahead, please. Which first time you're here or you here before? Okay. Yeah, go ahead, please. Um, well, it, it, it's essentially just uh, saying, you know, the, the Buddha develops and, and describes uh, the insight meditation, the Pasana, uh, where we, we uh, are attentive to, we pay attention to uh, the qualities of existence, you know, we keep, we keep those in mind, uh, the uh, uh, nature of suffering and impermanence and uh, the not the non-self, and, uh, you know, by keeping those in mind, it, it helps us develop our, our wisdom and insight and uh, cultivate, you know, uh, an attitude basically like you know if you if you understand the nature of suffering and the permanence and, and the lack of, of self it helps you beyond greed it helps you beyond desire and that way you can attain peace and see the, the real reality of things instead of being stuck in, in all the illusions the ignorance mm -hmm. yeah so the whole purpose of meditation is to transform or to um transcend the suffering into the peacefulness and happiness uh, and and uh, in order to do that uh, yeah of course we do the practice and on the top of that we need to recognize what we call here the three mark of, of uh, assistant suffering um physical suffering mental suffering right the stress anxiety and so forth and uh, Impermanence, everything come and go. We talk about the past life. Yeah. Right? So, things come, they come and go. We cannot change. That's that's the, the nature of life. And when we don't do this life, we come back again in different form of life. Mm. Yeah. So, what's your name, please? Your name? Sure. Jeff. Yeah. So, you, Jeff, yeah. Joe. Mm -hmm. So, you, um, you know our schedule, right? You stop, I just stopped by. I just stopped by. I uh, I did not no, that's <laughs> the problem is so. we do this um, we do a meditation before this um, starting at 6 and then we do this uh, lesson with the master from 7 to 8 okay. um, we also do a thing uh, Saturday mornings that you could join um, at like 11 yeah. we usually do a lesson okay. yeah so important is um, to do a transform them and in Buddhist view because of ignorance because of delusion and anger and desire. That's why it calls for our wisdom. That's why we create our own suffering. No, no one else except ourselves. Mm. 
All right, so and Stephen, can you read the next one, please? It's still flashing. Oh, can he can hear you? There it is. Okay, go ahead. In all forms. In all forms of vipassana meditation, the meditator moves from a simple awareness of a focal object, such as the breathing, a stage called bare attention, to a higher level called clear comprehension. Here, one scrutinizes the phenomenon in the chain of casualty and sees exactly how the process occurs that binds the individual to desire and ignorance. The meditator moves on to contemplate feelings, noting their existence, how they arise from causes and condition over and condition our experience. The meditator's focus progressively turns to the contemplation of how perceptions and emotions can determine, in turn, our states of mind. Yeah. Can you can you summarize, please? Yeah. I kind of half understood that. I guess is. Uh, in a way of basically concentrating on the current, um, whatever it is that we're concentrating, and at the same time uh, focusing on how that particular feelings or whatever it is that we're thinking about will affect our current emotion um, and especially our thinking process, I guess, um, in a general sense, and then basically try to adapt it to avoid um, causing um um i'm guessing all the false thinking that um what causes all the pain that we go through in our just normal daily life so in the general sense i guess that's how i am understanding it more about that you know it's in west may bear attention west mean right here bear bear attention west mean just, just kind of like try not to thinking too hard I guess is in a sense I I didn't quite grasp that no no I would know that yeah most of the time somehow when we listen some you know, from others when we see things somehow we project our thinking on those things uh, based on our views. Um, so everyone has different views. For example, let's say, um, uh, yeah, let's say you use a cup there, right? Cup of water. Your views of that cup is different from mine. And by us, by us, right? You use us, of course, for drinking water, but I may complain. Why don't, why don't you use a water bottle instead of that one? Understand? So everyone has different point of view. When we just look at the water bottle, because we project our knowledge, we project out uh, uh, our background, whichever information that we have, whichever we we build up already on everything that we we see we hear. That's why we see things in different ways. Our reality isn't like a real reality, and it's. Mm. Only real from that particular mm. vantage point, that from any other vantage point, there's a separate reality. Another way, another thing that I would compare it to is, uh, you know, it, it's a normal thing that we all have to stop ourselves from doing, or at least we should all, all try to stop ourselves from doing. Whenever somebody else is talking, you know, and as somebody else is talking, like you start developing in your mind, like what you're going to say next before they're even done talking instead of listening to them. It's kind of the same thing. Wouldn't mm -hmm. you say? Uh, it's like, you know, when you listen to someone or even just when you like, like the master said, like a water bottle or anything, like whenever you, you have all these preconceived thoughts and ideas that you're like projecting onto the thing, like, like Kirsten said, but, it, you know, just drop all of that and just without all that stuff that's already like preloaded in your brain, just like 
perceive and listen. That's called pay attention. It is the ball, water bottle, as the water bottle, not based on your thinking. That's based on the perception, uh, based on your judgment. And when you listen to me too, when you listen to others, if we just listen with that kind of bare uh, attention, bare listening, we just listen to the sound. But if we project ourselves, oh, okay, I like the person, I like that voice, and so forth and so forth, that's where we have problem there. You follow that? That's why I call bare attention. That's so why, um, let's say, um, even while we're drinking water or whichever water, or whichever food we consume, we can recognize the taste of that. But if we have the notion, oh, I like this food, I like this food type of water, that's where we have analytical thinking. That's why we would check our mind on that kind of things. That's why we have, may have some conflict. Because um, my, flavor, my favorite food is not your and fine by words. You see that? But if we just have that like, bare attention, bare intention to consume, to taste that food, that more you know. That's called bare intention. Is it clear now? Of the um, Kenya you follow, right? Mm. Yeah, it's just uh being conscious and aware that that it exists. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Without putting any seasoning, anything on that. Right. Yeah. Okay. And um, again, clear comprehension is the same way. When we have the kind of bare attention, and we have the kind of clear comprehension too, like you just mentioned, right? When someone is speaking, we we let our mind run around and and we say, oh, okay, I will. I'm going to talk about this, and we may not pay attention on what they say there, but in this type of meditation, we have the bare intention, attention. So that's why we can see the whole picture. We can understand what they try to explain. Yeah, that what that's what's about. Yeah, so that we can contemplate about the um, uh, the feeling, uh, the form, and so forth. That that's about. Okay, let's see here. Mm. Okay, this is uh like this, this one here. Uh um other kid, yeah, you want to read this one? You want to read sure. it? Yeah. I can, yeah, that's fine. Uh <clears throat> throughout the modern Buddhist world, the main form of meditation is known as the Pashyana. Yes. Pali Vipassana Asana commonly translated as insight meditation. Its earliest exercise stages center on the contemplation of the body, beginning with the breathing, bodily postures, parts of the body, the four elements found within it, and ending with symmetry contemplations, which involves observing human bodies decaying after death, See side four, page 83. That's okay. You follow that, right? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, so again, the main form of meditation in this Vipassana, in some meditation, yeah, it starts with the contemplation about the body. Uh, so the, the important thing is to be aware of whatever happened in our body. It's the course, um, or the beginning stage. And that's the we be where we be aware of our feeling. And we, we go deeper, we be aware of what's going on in our mind. In our daily life, can we be aware of that? Not easy. And and, and also the other important thing that like uh, in insight meditation is noticing the coming and going of everything. So it does, it gets broken down into those very specific stages. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing is you're supposed to notice the coming and going, the what is subject to suffering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anand, can you hear us? Anand? Yes, uh, 
Hello, Thai. Yes, I just joined. Sorry, thank you. Yeah. yeah, so basically in this Vipassana meditation, there's many different ways. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the general one, there's this what we call fog type of contemplation. Contemplation about the body, contemplation about the feeling, uh, contemplation about our mind, and contemplation about the phenomenon. That's just one of the um, the techniques. Uh, yeah, so um, that's why it's involved with cemetery contemplation and in the past, not now. Uh, the Buddha encouraged monks to go to the cemetery to contemplate about the, the physical decay of the body. When in the past, you're still asked to focus on the on the decay and the mm -hmm. grossness and all the. Mm -hmm how your body kind of turns into a big pile of ooze. But one of the way, and uh, yeah. now of course it's convenient for us to to contemplate, to be aware of our physical body, the way that we can consume the food, we consume the water, the way what we walk, the way what we sit, the way what we stand. That's what we call the combination of our body. And uh, if we come our mind enough, we could recognize and be aware of feeling, good feeling, bad feeling, or neutral feeling. For example, let's say while you drink water, whether it's, it's, it's tasteless or whether it's, it's sweet and so forth, you have good feeling about, let's say, sweet water, for example. Yeah, if it's tasteless, you may not, or you, you feel you don't have any feeling, it's just neutral feeling. That's what about. Mm. And that step is, is the hardest one to recognize our thought. It's not easy, right? Sometimes we say something that um, we regret. We think one thing, we will say another thing, right? Because we're not follow with whichever thing here. We're not mindful with whichever thing we say, whichever thing we do. And that's why they, mm, they would not cover each other. So this mindfulness practice help us to to start with the body contemplation, to be aware of our body, because it's easy. For example, we are aware of our breath. That is the most um, common practice, uh, breath meditation in most of tradition. And, and yeah, practicing just a very simple meditation, like I was telling you guys about noticing thought or the mental element you can before you act on it, it you start giving yourself some more space just in regular life that you can recognize mental element you just end up giving yourself some more time <laughs> before you say oh do i need to act on that or is this something that's gonna okay you, you might do this can you see on the yeah. small? Be uh, passing out, yeah. Meditation together in theater. Oh, meditator. Is there any comfortable seated posture, perhaps seated on the cushion of the floor in the relaxed stance in the lotus position with legs crossed and with the foot resting on the opposite side, or the half lotus with just one foot on the opposite side? However, comfort is most important and beginners can start by sitting in straight back chairs. Hmm. You know Westman Cross late, right? Um, so, but um, it's not much important. You can sit in the chair uh, and the pause as well. As soon as you keep your back and your hands straight, that's, that's the more you know. Mm. Yeah, and uh, it's, just, it's one of the practice when the, the monk in the past, they sit in four lotus for several hours. But everyone is different. Hmm. Okay, let's see here. Oh, would you like to read, please? Hmm. With the eyes closed, flow begins by focusing the mind on the phenomenon of the Most teachers suggest focusing on the sensation of the in-breath and out-breath just below the nostrils as the anchor experience the return to when the mind and when the mind and the mistress. Yeah. So, have you ever, have you ever, how, how you do you do? How did you do the breath meditation? How? Yeah, I normally 
it was normally very focused on like breathing and like feeling the air coming in and filling up your body and then feeling the mm -hmm. Uh, most of the time, we pay attention on something out, out there, the food, the car, the house, but we don't pay attention on our breath. Breath is source of our life. If we hold our breath, if we exhale, on, and uh, we, if we don't inhale, what happens for five minutes or ten minutes? The brain will be damaged, right? Mm. But that's why that's why breath meditation is, more, is so useful. It's there for us. Uh, in meditation, there's many uh, objects of concentration. You can focus on the light candles. You can focus on a flower. Anything that you want to, but you need to have them in front of you. But the breath go with us until we die. That's why it's, it's, it's convenient. And also, the breath is the, the, the thermometers of our body and mind. You follow that? You know what I mean? The breath is the what? Yeah, thermometers. You know why? Let's say when you stress out so much, when you have a lot of anxiety, how is the breath? Quick. Quick, heavy. And when you have your calm mind, what happened? Yeah. Yes. And how about the physical body? Let's say while you're sitting here, right? Uh, you have slow breath, right? But when we go out there to do some physical work, have hard breath and quick breath, right? So that's why the breath is the indicators. You see that now? Mm -hmm. That's like we call the thermometers of a body and mind. So when we calm our mind, right, the breath will be slowed down. And our physical body will be slow too, and vice versa. Now that's why when we uh, uh, really focus on the breath, eventually our mind will be calmed down. And uh, actually, um, I went to Texas the last couple of weeks ago. I showed the charge. I think I'd like to, to share with you, you the charge here. Yeah, get me with me and me pull out here. Uh, and Stephen and Ann, and you follow, right? Yes, more for I do. Okay, let me share. Sorry. Yep. Let me... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me share and go down here. Okay, here is um this one what you call the ACT, but uh, let me move move down a little bit. Hmm. In the past, present, we can come back. Let's see here. Hmm. Okay, see this breath and emotion. It's okay. Or it's just small, too small. Better now. Yeah, see that. Breath and emotion, see joy, slow, anger, fast, fear, fast, sadness, slightly slow, deep, right? This, the breath relate to our emotion here. Mm. Anand, you can follow, right, Anand? Yes, more for time, yes. And here, benefit of breath here. 70% of toxins are released since we are breathing properly. If you are not breathing properly, the toxins do not get released. Yeah, it's a deep emotional. And uh, improve uh, mm, a blood, deep breath, release the carbon dioxide and risk oxygen supply, improving blood quality and so forth here. Yeah. yeah, this, uh, let, let me move out here. Let me move out, this is the breath here. All right here. Hmm. You see, this is the um, joy, laughter, sadness, crying. Okay, this is the breath, follow our emotion. 
and this up breath follow um our state of mind beta beta this is our state of mind now this is a lot of junk a lot of jumping up and down here now our part is slow down theta is the state of meditation here deep meditation here see that and delta deep uh dreamless sleep or unconscious or, or even deep meditation so our stay of mind oh you you watch you don't have that video before right how they um they recognize the brand of the monk yeah you you watch that movie? i didn't see the video but i in my classes we learned about like the um different Levels of like the wavelengths. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Um. Uh. I think uh we can we can see that that clip. Okay. Let's let me find find out the clip. Um. And let's be helpful. Meditation in the brain. Right here. Mm, let's see here. Mm. Mm. Let me pull out this. Um, let's see. Here. Mm, meditation. Um. Yeah, brand, um, bless, and bless the. Uh, oh, right here. This one. If you want to boost your income with an AI fueled side business so that you can enjoy more free time and. Yeah. Yeah. Related to our understanding of the effects of meditation on the brain and body. The research that we've done on meditation in the brain has focused on two major domains that meditation actually affects. One is attention and the other is motion. And what we have discovered is that the circuits in the brain that are important for regulating both attention and emotion can be transformed by meditation. The 30,000 foot goal is to use the scientific research to um, understand the nature of suffering and how it can best be alleviated. Uh, and Ming Yerimpeche was one of our first long-term practitioners. Uh, well, this will be strapped onto the arm and uh, we'll get your ratings of how... Uh, the normal, without meditation. Yes, yes, without meditation. Usually when you do this kind of research with either brain electrical measurements or MRI, it takes a lot of what we call post-processing to look at the data. And what post-processing means is simply um, lots of uh, computer algorithms churning at the data after the data is collected. And it often takes um, many, many days of computer processing to extract these really weak signals uh, in a lot of noise. Uh, it's finding a needle in a haystack. With Mingyur Rinpoche, we didn't need any fancy post-processing, we actually were able to see a signal with our naked eye. Of course, the first thing we thought is that there's artifact and there's something wrong um, because this just, just is not something that we typically would see. And so then we kind of go through the entire recording system and take everything apart and put it back together uh, before we convinced ourselves that this is actually real. Then uh, when we discovered that it was real, it was really quite amazing because nobody had ever seen these kinds of signals before for this um, length of time. And what we were looking at are gamma oscillations in the brain. They're very fast frequency brain oscillations. And they're seen in, in, in any ordinary person but they're seen for very, very short periods of time, typically less than one second. They also don't have such large amplitude. And when Miguel and Pache was meditating, these signals were large, they were highly synchronized, and they lasted for many, many minutes. They lasted for the entire time that the meditation session was in progress. 
uh, and that's what made them very visible. So that was really uh, a very important moment because we knew that from a scientific perspective, there was a there there. We can see that a person who meditates for even just two weeks, 30 minutes a day, is shows a different pattern of brain activity than when they started two weeks before. And that is really important because it suggests that the brain really is plastic, that we really can make these changes, and that it actually doesn't take that much. A total of seven hours of practice was sufficient to change the brain in very objective, measurable ways. Well-being and warm-heartedness can be cultivated. Uh, we can think of them almost as skills, which can be enhanced through certain kinds of practice. Okay. Yeah. So is it is in line with what you learned, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. How is that? So, um, what what course that you have taken that relate to neuroplasticity? Um. Well, I took like a pretty intensive like introduction to behavioral neuroscience. Mm -hmm. Um. In the fall. Uh, and it did talk about like neuroplasticity and brain waves and, mm -hmm. and like meditation to like providing a different state. And you see that. Yeah. You say only two weeks, it may change your brain. Yeah, because the brain is like a morsel, right? When we do exercise, right? When we lift weight, right? It, it increases the strength. If we don't do, uh, if we don't do uh, exercise, we'll be quicker. So does the brain. You want to do this kind of mind training, meditation, breath meditation, whichever it affect to um our nerve system in that way. Only two weeks. Mm, yeah. Yeah, Stephen, you follow on Stephen, right? Yes, I understand. Kinzia, you follow? Yes, I understand. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and and you follow and and? Yes, I follow. Yeah. yeah. So that's why now they um people can recognize by um you can do his charts. You have you had that um, MRI scan before? Oh yeah. I wonder you right. You had that before. I just had that last month. And yeah, I just had them last month. Too. Oh really? Mm -hmm. You have that? No. I had an M I had a I had all I had the um MRI, I had a CAT scan, and I had an EEG. Really? Wow. Okay. All right. So thank you. Let's us uh, move on. Uh, so that's why that's why it's so important. Uh, it's just no mystery at all nowadays because we have this couple of um, instruments, this couple of tools to recognize the effectiveness of the brain uh, when we do meditation. Yeah. All right. Let's just uh, move back to our... Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, you know what's mean anchor experience. You know what's mean. You know. You know what's mean anchor experience. What you know what's mean. Is that like grounding, like mm -hmm. You know the ship or the boat. If they want to keep in one place, they have to put anchor out, right? So there's a mind, a mind fly everywhere. So in order to anchor our mind, yeah, count the breath, hold with breath. This is one way we can anchor our mind. That's what they call anchor experience there. Yeah. Mm. And uh, oh, one thing is one more thing I think I would like to share with you too. This one here. Mm. Oh, okay, right here. Can you follow? Can you see that? Lack of oxygen in the brain of five to ten minutes it is permanent brain damage. Yeah, so our brain use twenty percent of total blood and oxygen in our body. That's why our brain needs the breath. But that's why you know sometimes people have so much anger, so much anxiety, they have hard breath, right? Uh, and even they may collapse yeah, because um, they couldn't consume much enough oxygen for themselves. 
Just yeah. little Sid, he almost uh, passed away right when he mm -hmm. was standing up there. Oh, the stage right when we were doing the chants mm -hmm. for, the, for the birthday or so. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, oh, really? He uh, almost passed out? Yeah, really? Passed out Why? Right. He's scared? Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. See here that the system here. Yeah. This is why the oxygen with the, the immune system and so forth. That's why deep breathing is much healthy for our body and mind. And it may help us to calm our mind too. Yeah. So, in both ways, that's why I call the breath is terminus of our body and mind. Mm. Yeah. And uh, let me move this one here. Let me move up oh, right here. Uh, this one is just the breath ratio chart. Some people they have they count inhalation four, hold one, and so forth. But in the Zen donation, you don't need to hold anything. You don't need to mm, to hold. Get inhale and exhale in a natural way. Yeah. That's why when you inhale completely, that's the turn for your Exhalation, you don't need to hold. None of the Buddhists I've ever trained in any we don't need to do that. Style have encouraged mm -hmm. breath, breath work, breath meditation, yes, but not like breathing like extra deep or just but more just awareness. Mm -hmm. Yes, so yeah. important is the awareness. Yeah, yeah. Mm. it's different, but breath yoga, right? Yeah, it's quite yeah. different. But uh, if you don't know, it's just stressful. It may be harmful. They're too. different. They're different mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Next um, one. Where are we at? Right. This practice. This practice makes one aware of the three modes of existence. The meditator quickly observes any uncomfortable body sensation. The real that the reality of impermanence is seen directly in the continuous movement of the diaphragm and in the ever changing frame of the thought. Non-self, they, one is the first thing to keep focus on the breath, despite one's will to do so. Hmm. You understand that? It, um, it brings, it brings your attention to the, um, the previously stated three marks of existence, and it also, um, brings forth that uh, slightly confusing concept of the non-self <laughs> of the, I don't even know how to describe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also impermanent too, right? You well, know, one breath in, one breath out, and it's just changed every time. And even, the, of course, our cell, right? It's, it's dying and it's uh, developing every moment. And so, they say that when we have inhalation and exhalation, we have that type of movement. We need to recognize this type of impermanence within the breath by itself. Uh, and the non self is because um, uh, the, the breath is not us. In Buddhist view, well, you say that um, this, you know, the five aggregates, you know, about that? You know, huh? we talk about that. You know, can you say it? the five aggregates, right? Yeah. Uh... It, it, it's it's like uh, you don't really have like a solid self. You have uh, you know your material form, whatever, all that stuff that's made of. You have your uh, habits. You have your consciousness. You have your uh, and uh, what's the one I'm missing? That's cool. yeah. We show you here. Yeah, we show you. Uh, but yeah, and, and instead of like a self in Buddhism, that's like a solid thing. We think of. Uh, you know, everything is made out of like a collection of of different things. And they aren't even things, they're more like processes, more like yeah. verbs and nouns. So in Buddhism, it's not to do cell. It's just like here, the, we have this physical body, right? The eyes, ears, you know, the tongue. And that's when the feeling, good feeling, bad feeling, uh, perception, our thinking, our recognition, uh, mental formation is our habit, habit pardon, our, um, and the last one is our consciousness. So those are the the uh, the elements, uh, components, the compo components of what you call the cell. Mm, uh, but mm, they come and go. But in Buddhist view, especially the Mahayana tradition, is we have the pure mind. 
the pure awareness. That's that what we call the real self. Like um, we just mentioned about the bare awareness, right? Of the the cup, water, the water bottle, it stay with us. But because most of the time we project ourselves in different ways of views, that's why we raise some kind of conflict with the other. There's a story, a funny story that um, uh, it say that this if um, uh, five blind five, five blind people so they touch the elephants, and they they try to describe the elephant, the one that touched the legs. So the the blind person say, oh, uh, the elephant is like uh, the post, the big post. Mm. Mm. And um, the other blind person touched um, the the um, the elephant uh, ear, the big ear, right? It's like the, so he says it's like the the elephant is like the, uh, the the fence. So everyone, because they blind, they couldn't see the whole picture of the elephants. They get uh, understand in according to their view about the elephant. So do we? So do we? So we see things in different way depend upon how. Uh, we are educated, how we we will grow up with, and so forth. That's why if we um if we try to argue with all the people, yeah, it's non it's non stop. Uh, so that's what this is about. So in Buddhist view, the cell is in, in this sense the the cell is the, the components, uh, of uh, the the body, the feeling, the perception, the consciousness there. That's what's about when we in do a meditation, we recognize us that type of non self. That's what it's about. But uh, the next one in another level in Mahay Buddhist tradition is that we recognize a pure mind, a pure awareness that of you self. That's what's about. Mm. Yeah, and uh, Anan, you follow Anan? Yes, I. Yeah. Uh, of the king, yeah, you follow, you follow what, what we just try to discuss. Absolutely, I'll overstay. Oh, this one this is the first time, right? The first time you, you heard about this, right? Yes, first time, first time. It makes sense. I mean, I'm aware of uh, your conscious, your subconscious mind, and just being aware, being present, um, and just embracing your, your inner self. So, I'm very in tune with um, spirituality, but uh, from the Buddhist perspective. Um, some of the language is new. Some of it, um, I, I've come across. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. One. I mean, this is kind of just a paraphrasing of what you said, but but yeah. Uh, one one way that I think of the the not self when when we read is you know, uh, you the fact that you need air. And the air enters your body and it like goes to all your different cells and like becomes part of you. And then all the other parts of the air that used that were in there before go out and it's all part of the cycle with everything else. That's mm -hmm. part of the non-self because you know you think of your body as like a like a single thing, but it doesn't function without this particular uh connection with everything else where you know, other stuff, whether it's uh, air or uh, food or energy or whatever, is always coming in and going out. And uh, the coming in and going out also, I would say that connects to, you know, the, the impermanence because, you know, when, when we breathe, you know, it's it's part of a cycle of, of rising and falling, uh, coming and going, just like everything else, just like the sun and the moon, uh living things being born and dying or you know countries rise and fall you know just like our, our breath and you know whenever we breathe we can like see our our chest rise and fall we can feel things go in and out it's just like that with everything else in the universe yeah and then we discussed about the consciousness before right all information we store here in our consciousness mm -hmm. after we done this physical body it doesn't mean that this is the end we move on the different form of lives and our information in the consciousness go with us there. Yep. It's a cycle. It's energy never change. We can decycle this uh, keyboard. This can remove control in different different form, whether it's the the mouse and so forth. 
So that's just the whole idea there. Mm. Okay. So um mm. so is this a, is this a brand new for you? It's brand new for you. Are you heard about this before? I thought obviously this means a brain language is a lot but um sometimes new. It's new for you, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Okay, good. All right, since time is up, let us uh, end today and we continue in the next week then. Yeah, so we have meditation.